flowers to music. They are so moving. Tonight on Man Alive, delving into the roots of violence, a remarkable program in the prison system has a message for all of us. Hello, I'm Peter Downey. We live in a violent world. Images of death and destruction virtually inundate our senses. But because the violence rarely touches us directly, it's comforting to think the problem is out there with others. The truth, though, may be that what is happening on our television screens is really an exaggerated reflection of something in us all. Alternatives to Violence is a Quaker-inspired prison program which takes as its starting point the idea that we are all violent in very subtle and unacknowledged ways. Tonight on Man Alive, we are going to enter that dark underbelly of our society, the prison system, to find what is worst and perhaps best about ourselves. Workworth Penitentiary, 100 miles east of Toronto. Medium security, 600 inmates. The population covers just about every crime known to humanity. It's a world of constant potential violence. A world where the best of what makes us human rarely enters. For the last year at Workworth, a workshop has been offered to inmates by unpaid outside volunteers. Alternatives to Violence was started by Quakers in the late 70s in the New York State prison system. Today, the Quakers still administer the program, but the only requirement for running the workshops is a willingness to first go through them as a participant. I'm Steve Angel. I really sort of started this program when it began in 75. I took the basic workshop, and I found out some things about Steve Angel I didn't know before. I found out there was violence in me, too. And I found out that I wasn't in touch with my own feelings the way I ought to be. And so I really gained from being that workshop. And I've gained from every other workshop I've been in since, and I've done more than 100 of these workshops. So what you get out of this workshop is going to be what you put into it. Not what I say or someone else says, but what you yourself put into it. That's going to make the difference. And you'll take away something that nobody can take away from you. I'm a lifer. I've got a lot of violence in my background and my history, child life, adult life, in the penitentiary, outside the penitentiary. Uh, I'm here for a better understanding of the changes that I've made. I'm a vindictive person and uh, have been for quite a few years. I just hope to get a better understanding of myself out of this and uh, maybe learn to deal with reality and some of the harshness that it's got to throw at us. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Eve Guacu. Uh, I'm serving a lengthy sentence for armed robbery. Uh, I'd like to think that I'm gentle by nature, but society uh, labels me as uh, extremely dangerous. My name is Dave, serving a life sentence. And one of the main things I'm looking forward to this weekend is getting more in touch with the violence within me. Throughout the course of my incarceration, I've been dealing with victim-offender reconciliation. It's been a difficult struggle, and one of the things I found is that I had to get in touch with the violence within me before I could even possibly attempt to reconcile with anybody in the community, in particular my the victims, my the, the victims within. I'd like to pass. Thank you. My name is Michael. Jagger. Quite honest, I'm not too sure why I'm here. Still trying to figure it out. My adjective name will be Dandelion Doc. I'm going to stay with that one. Patient Patrick. Off the top, everyone has to name themselves with a positive adjective. It helps set a caring tone. No put-downs are allowed over the next three days 
of others or of oneself. To be dependable, Dill. Dandelion dog. Besides the outside facilitators, three people from the community have decided to join this workshop, willing to take a deeper look at the problem of violence within themselves. With much trepidation, because <laughs> I don't like being called Sue, so I'll be sweet Susan. I guess you call me Mickey Mouse. I got big ears. And plus, Mickey Mouse has a lousy attitude. So that has to be a positive adjective, starting with the same letter. Mighty. Mighty Mouse. Mighty Mouse. Mighty Mouse. Mighty Mouse. Dandelion Doc. Violet Victor. Patient Patrick. Dependable Dill. Delightful Dave, Sweet Susan, uh, Elected Elgin, Ernest Ed, Christmas Seer, Squirrely Squires, Radiant Rosemary, Marvelous Mike, Mighty Mouse, my great granddad, and Super Sean. So what we're going to do, we're going to brainstorm the word violence. What does violence mean to you and me? Anybody. Firearms, guns, okay. Well, certainly we find in the workshops Verbal that violence, yeah. okay. most individuals come in with a very narrow violence, view of aggression. what violence is. And they think it principally as physical. But very rapidly, they seem to grasp the fact that uh, it's a lot more than that and that you don't have to touch someone and yet you can still be very violent with that person. And uh, this is a real eye-opener to them and certainly forms the basis for, I think, everything else we do in the workshop. The program is a series of increasingly advanced workshops. The only entrance requirement is to volunteer, and there's a long waiting list. The basic workshop runs three grueling 12-hour days. On day one, it involves a lot of discussion around the roots of violence. Or, okay, what makes you frustrated, man? I like to dominate a relationship, and if I can't dominate a relationship, I get frustrated and turn to drugs. When I turn to drugs, I usually end up getting into a lot more trouble than I had anticipated. I'm not sure how much I'm doing with it, how much I'm creating it. Yeah. Really. I think sometimes when I tell, for instance, stories that are kind of, could be interpreted as put down on women, I begin to dislike myself terribly. Mm. After all, after I think about it. And then there's another ingredient that bothers me too, and lots of times the women laugh. Oh, you know, really? They laugh at their own put downs. What I look for in a friend is honesty, trust, Joy, willingness to share, willingness to listen, willingness to believe in me and someone I can believe in, someone I can feel whole with, that I pass. There are a lot of good things here about friendship. Sounds like a fairy tale. <laughs> you know, at one time in my life, friendship was a twisted definition. Let's go rob a bank, let's do this, let's do that. But to me, a friendship is uh, one who is, will give you, give you a blast if you're out of line. Uh, not to put you down, but if, you, you know, if you're screwing up, pull you up on it. I don't believe in friendships. There is nothing uh, in my personal book. There, uh, I believe it's just acquaintances. I haven't ran into a friend yet. I think just mostly acquaintances. And acquaintances are good just as friends. They help you through the bad times just as the good. I'm Super Sean, and uh, I think what a friendship is to me is a reflection, reflection of what I'm looking for in myself. Um, I think it takes a long time to develop a bond of a friendship. It may take years to get close to somebody in certain ways, especially in places like this. I find that there are so many different 
personalities in the institution, it's hard to deal with everybody on a level head. Uh, you find that a lot of people are emotionally frustrated again, and other people are egotistical, and other people are like me, they're depressed, and, and it's, it's very hard to, to uh, relate to a lot of people because everybody puts up a wall. Everybody wants to be strong, powerful, and uh, show no pain. The facts of prison life dictate that most inmates do not know each other in any meaningful way at all, even though they may see each other on a daily basis. In one of the exercises, a group must build a construction using tinker toys. The only catch is that they have to communicate in complete silence. I don't think you can expect to make life changes in three days. What you can expect, and I have seen this happen over and over again, is you get the person to redefine themselves or start redefining themselves. And as soon as they start doing that, they then begin to think of different ways of living their lives. <laughs> what are you doing, man? What do you think this is? I just washed the floor. Are you talking to me? <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Role plays are an important way of looking at behavior. In an exercise called eye messages, Improvisation is used to examine alternatives to habitual ways of communicating during a potentially violent situation. Gee, I wonder if you could wait for a second. <laughs> I, until it dries up. Wait, 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 wait. Let, yes, let, 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 let him walk across it first, then give him the eye message. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> give him the mop and eye. Look at Wait for uh, now. Wait, wait. What is an eye message? I feel about what? Okay. What is the feeling? I feel upset. All right. Now there, you got a feeling. I feel upset. When? What? When you walk on the floor. When, when I'm, I'm wa when I'm mopping the floor. <coughs> okay. Stay, stay away from blameful words. When I'm mopping the floor, what? And what happens? And someone walks across in dirty boots, right? Uh, the floor. Maybe I could, uh, it's going to be dry in a few minutes. Maybe I could just uh, go around the side here. And... Yeah, that's more like it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, okay. yeah. Hit him with the map. Yeah. <laughs> that's a simple solution. Good props there. <laughs> I love all sports. I, I, I ski. I, uh, I, skate, uh, I like canoeing, I like, uh, uh, especially I like uh, tennis. I, I love playing tennis. The last, last few years in Melhaven, I won the tournaments. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was given a 10-speed, beautiful bike. And when I'm bored, I, I, I used to just get on the bike and go. I'd spend like nine hours on the bike just riding. I dreamt of being a football player when I was a kid. <coughs> but drugs and uh, alcohol came first. <laughs> My favorite sport when I love it, don't play here so much. It's cricket. My favorite sport would be uh, car racing, NASCAR stock. Dale Earnhardt's my best. My hero, my idol, my god. <laughs> my my hobby, I guess really don't like hobbies. Actually, I'm a B and E master, so usually uh, if I can rob a place successfully, I guess that's my hobby. But uh, I'm supposed to change my ways here, so I'll leave it at that. I have a number of interests. Delightful day. But I have a number of interests. From sports, they range anywhere from archery to equestrian riding, horse car, horse uh, racing, 
Car racing, boat racing, anything that moves, that has a sense of elegance and style to it, I enjoy it. I've been riding for 12 years now, and uh, <clears throat> if it wasn't for the writing, for me being able to express myself in that particular way, um, it's hard to say, you know, you know how I'd be now. I enjoy people for my friends, having them over and so having a hobby of hospitality and enjoy having people for dinner and that sort of thing. <laughs> In the most important role play, they take on different characters and improvise a situation leading towards violence. The idea is that someone will come up with a non-violent solution first. What's this? Hey, hey what's going hey, on? This is our cell. It's seven o'clock in the morning. Dude, this is your problem. Your cell is over there. This is our I was trying to have it resolved without this physical fight that was so coming on so strong and I must I was feeling almost defeated in, <laughs> in what I was trying to do and I'm not sure I even said the word I or I'm not sure what I said for sure but I was really I was shocked I'm still shocked <laughs> when you arrived at the door of Butch and Mud you immediately started coming on to Butch why didn't you go after Mud uh, if he was the person with the hard hearing had the music up, why didn't you confront him? I'm not too sure, actually. Uh, the quite the truth is, I, I turned beat red. I, I almost forgot my train of thought. I kind of loved it there for a little bit. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> but even at a moment that seems hopeless, inspiration can appear. Going on here in our home. This is our home, damn it. Yeah, but it's our home, too. And he has, he has trouble hearing the music. Can you allow, allow us to give you a set of earphones? Yeah, sure. Sure, I've got, I've got two cents. Right. Excellent. Okay, so uh, we get the earphones. You know, the, the timing in this music is really wicked. <laughs> it is pretty rude, but I guess we were quite inconsiderate. And if you guys are willing to offer some headsets, then we'll use headsets from now on. The central idea is that a non-violent solution will appear out of the moment when there is respect for others and for oneself. Uh, what I want you to do with these is fold it in half like this, the whole bunch, and tear it, and you will have ten pieces of paper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are now ready. Um, let me explain this exercise. This is an opportunity for you to take an inventory of yourself. For me, the roots of violence are very much centered in the self and in wanting things for self rather than thinking of others. The only way we can move from that is to develop an attitude of really caring for others. And this sort of brings us, you might say, in a full circle because I don't think we can really care for others unless we care for ourselves. Turn the first piece of paper over. Look at what it says. And say to yourself, I am this. Feel what it's like to have this as a part of yourself. If you included some negative characteristics, maybe this is one of those. Feel what it's like. Then crumble it up. And just drop it right on the floor in front of you. Now 
I feel what it's like not to have that as a part of yourself. How would you be different? as a part of yourself anymore. Now I know this is very difficult and hard, but take number two. Turn it over and look at it. Say to yourself, I am this. Like, learn from this exercise to have a lot to be thankful for. People to share with, uh, family. I often don't think of that. Um, think of hope. Maybe I lost that. I have learned from this exercise that I am a valuable person. With whom, within whom much life has yet to be lived, but more importantly, how valuable the life was that I had taken. And I can no longer take life for granted. Lesson I learned that without these characteristics, I wouldn't exist. Uh, The idea of, of having my, my body and my life in, in, in other people's hands, having my safety at, at their control, and just the feeling of knowing, trusting that they aren't going to drop me was, it was phenomenal. It really made me really made me reach deep down inside myself and tell myself that, hey, not everybody in the world is out to get you. So you don't have to be such a, a wall builder all the time. It was, it was phenomenal. <laughs> it was excellent. We believe there's that, uh, that of God in every person. And so 
if every person is indeed a part of the divine, then to approach another person in a manner that is disrespectful of that is being disrespectful of God. We believe that there's good in everybody. If you take one O out of that good, you've got what I really mean. <laughs> Of the 13 inmate participants, 12 signed up for the advanced workshop. Steve Angel won't be able to make it. His entire year is already booked in other penitentiaries.